In this video, we're going to be looking at inter-VLAN routing. So assuming you have a switch, and you have two VLANs, so let's say LAN, VLAN 2 and VLAN 3. Now if you have a computer connected to VLAN 2, and another computer connected to VLAN 2, and another connected to VLAN 3, now these two computers are on different networks, so it's probably on the 192.168.1.0 network, and this is probably on the 192.168.2 network. By default, we know what a VLAN does. It segments broadcast domains, so they are on two different networks and they cannot communicate. If you try to ping 192.168, if this is .2.2, .2, if this is 1.2, if 192.168.1.2 tries to ping 192.168.2.2, .2, it's not going to work because they are on different networks, even though they are connected to the same switch. First, to have communication between these two devices, we need to figure out a way to route between the two devices, and we do that with the router. So this is our router. One way to do that is to plug two interfaces of the router into each of the VLANs. So we have, let's say this is fast Ethernet 0 slash 0, and this is fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. Once you configure these two interfaces with the right IP addresses, and say we give this 192.168.1.1 and this 192.168.2.1, by default, the router would route, and so when you send the packet from 192.168.1.2, as long as you set the default gateway to 192.168.1.1, you're going to be able to reach the other network because the router would route the packets. But if you look at this network, we had to use two interfaces. And we've also had to waste two ports on the switch. And this is not very efficient because we are wasting ports. So Cisco has introduced another way to do this, and that way is what's called a router on a stick. The concept of router on a stick is for you to just have one connection to the router and still have routing occur. The connections to the router would route between the two VLANs and the way we do this is through what's called sub interfaces. Because right now if you look at this network and you have one interface on VLAN 2 and another on VLAN 3. So if you're going to use one interface for instance we're going to have a switch here and it has VLAN 2 uh, and VLAN 3, I want one router to just have one interface. So what VLAN would the router interface be on? It has to carry VLAN 2 and VLAN 3 traffic. This would probably have to be a trunk. But even though it's a trunk, we still have to figure out how to configure the router to support both VLANs. And the way to do that is through the use of sub-interfaces. So what we are going to do is we are going to divide the router's physical interface into two sub-interfaces. So we are going to say, okay, this is fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. We're going to divide it into fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 0.1 and fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 0.2. So these are sub-interfaces. And then we are going to assign each of the sub-interfaces to the different VLANs. So let's take a look at how that works in the command line. So we're connected to the switch right now. And what we want to do is to check the VLANs. So go to privilege mode and say show VLANs. And here we can see that Bass Ethernet 0 slash 1 is in VLAN 2 and Bass Ethernet 0 slash 3 is in VLAN 3. So if we show CDP neighbors, we can see that uh, host 1 is connected to Bass Ethernet 0 slash 1 and host 2 is connected to Bass Ethernet 0 slash 3, meaning that host 1 is VLAN 2 and host 2 is in VLAN 3. So what I want to do right now is configure the router. And first thing we need to do is to configure the interface of the router that connects to the switch as a trunk. So we go into the interface that connects the router, and that interface is fast Ethernet 0 slash 5. So interface, fast Ethernet 0 slash 5, and we're going to configure as a trunk. The first thing we want to do is to set up an encapsulation. So we would say switch port trunk encapsulation and make it dot one q. And next we want to do is to make a trunk port. So we say switch port mode trunk. Once we do that, we have made fast Ethernet 0 slash 5 a trunk port. And the next thing we're going to do is go to the router and configure the interface of the router. So let's go to the router. So here we don't have any configuration on the router. So first thing we want to do is to go into the privileged mode and then to the config mode to start configuring our interfaces. So if we do show IP interface brief right now, we can see that fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 is down and does not have any IP address. So what we are going to do is 
that we are going to go into that interface, fast Ethernet zero slash zero, and we're going to bring it up. So we say no shut because if the physical interface is shut down, the sub interface would not come up. So we have to turn on the physical interface in order for the sub interface to work. So we say no shut. And the next thing we're going to do is start creating our sub interfaces. So we can say interface fast Ethernet zero slash zero point two. And the next thing we want to do is to say that the encapsulation for this interface, it should use dot one Q and that it should encapsulate it with VLAN two. And then we can give it an IP address. So we will say IP address one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot one. 255.255.255.0 and for the second sub interface uh, we can exit and go back and say interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0 dot 3 same thing an encapsulation dot 1q 3 and we type IP address 192.168.2.1 255.255.255.0 and now if we do show IP interface brief what we're going to see right now is that we have the fast ethernet zero slash zero interface and we have the two sub interfaces that have been configured and if we do show IP route we're going to see that the two networks of these sub interfaces have into the routing table meaning that the router can now route between the two networks so we can go to our host device to test so now we're on host one and what we're going to do is we can check the IP address of host one if I show IP interface brief, we can see that host one is 192.168.1.2. So if I try to ping its default gateway, which is the router ping 192.168.1.1, I can reach the router and then try to reach host two, which is 192.168.2.2, and I can reach host two. To be sure that I am routing through the router, what I'm going to do is going to trace route to 192.168. Dot two, uh, dot two. And we can see that it goes through RAR1, goes through 192.168.1.1 before it gets to 192.168.2.2, which is the other, inter other device. So this is how a router on a stick works. But what if we don't have a router to route between the two VLANs? Is it possible to route with a switch? There are some switches that are called multi-layer switches because they can actually function at many layers of the OSI model. Uh, so, for instance, if we go back to our switch, now we show versions, so we come out and say show version, we can see that this is a 3560 switch, and the 3560 switch is a multi-layer switch, meaning that it can switch and it can route. So we can actually make the switch a router. Uh, but by default, the switch is just a switch, and you have to turn on IP routing to make it a router. The way to do that is by using the IP routing command in a config mode. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to go into the config mode of the switch and say IP routing. The next thing we need to do is to give the switch interfaces on those VLANs. And the way to do that is by what is called the switch virtual interface or the SVI. So what we're going to have is that we're going to configure the interface VLANs of these switches and give them IP addresses and their ranges. But before we do that, we're going to shut down the link to the router. So we're going to go to interface path Ethernet 0 slash 5, which we configured before as a trunk, and just say shut down. So now that we've shut down the interface, we can now use the IP addresses that we used on the router before for the switch. So we're going to go to interface VLAN 2 and say uh, the IP address will be 192.168.1.1. Uh, 255.255.255.0. We're also going to go to interface VLAN 3 and say that IP address will be 192.168.2.1, uh, 255.255.255.0. Uh, and if we do show IP route right now, we can see that we have two connected routes. And it go via VLAN 2 and VLAN 3. So what we've done is we have made VLAN 2 and VLAN 3 router interfaces. And we don't need any routers to communicate between the two VLANs anymore. So all the routing is done on the control panel of the switch. And we don't need to pass it out of the switch. And this is very useful because we don't need to waste any interface of the switch in configuring routing. But routing is done in the switch hardware. So we've been able to look at three ways to do inner VLAN routing. The first one is to take a router and connect the two interfaces to the two separate VLANs and give them IP addresses so that it would work. The second one is the router on a stick, where we use one interface of a router, but we use two different sub-interfaces 
And the third one is using SVI on layer three switches. So let's just test that we still have connectivity from the host. So we are on host two, and let's try to ping host one. That would be 192.168.1.2, and we can reach it. And if we trace, we are going to find that it's going through the layer three switch. So 192.168.1.2, So in this video, we explored the three ways to configure inner VLAN routing. Thank you very much for watching.